26. Here's another thing we need to talk about. Uh, on the 10th of October, uh, that's, that's still the faith. We did that last year. I did a poor job of kind of getting the news out. Uh, it's a great thing. Uh, Powers played. He had his band play last year. Uh, we, we didn't have as many people as I wanted to show up. All, all our groups showed up. But uh, we've had it in the past. Midway City's come. Dell City's come. Uh, all that stuff. So the problem with it is October 10th is, is a homecoming for you. Do you guys want to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Show of hands. Show of hands. How many of you want to do it on homecoming week? Okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's how it's going to probably go down then. Uh, you guys will be working on your floats and all that all week long. And then that, that night, uh, come over. We're going to try to do it at around 6.30, 7 o'clock instead of 8, so late. Uh, come over there. Powers, you want me to play again? Okay. So uh, they'll provide music. Here's what I want you guys to do is spread the word to Midwest City, your buddies in Midwest City, Dell City, and Choctaw, okay? Coach Farley and I will call our coaches, try to get a hold of FCA people. Uh, that's a big deal. That's a nationwide deal, okay? Uh, where, where schools around the country come together, uh, bring your Bible and talk about prayer, have prayer, and just hang out for a little while, kind of like do listen to music, and then you guys can go back to your floats. Uh, but that's homecoming week. Okay, it's the only thing, so I'll make sure you guys want to do that. That'll be a busy week. But if we're willing to do it, if you guys want to, it looks like you want to, so we'll, we'll do that. Okay? Uh, JT's got a couple more good, good speakers lined out. We've got a good speaker tonight, alumni uh, of CA, uh, Mark Koenig. Give me a
for, for a few years of my life. Uh, I, I struggled with uh, alcohol addiction. Uh, I was a partier. <clears throat> I struggled with drugs. My relationships were uh, dishonoring to God. And uh, I, was, I was at a place where I was completely broken. And I, I just wanted to tell you uh, the, the end of my testimony, or truly the beginning of my testimony, so you know a little bit of where I come from. Uh, and that is this, I was at my home one day and nobody else was home. Um, I found out uh, recently, at that time, that uh, my girlfriend had cheated on me multiple times. Uh, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol and going through a lot of junk in my life. And I was, I was at my home and, and our family was going through some rough times. And I remember uh, I started to argue with God and I started to get really, really frustrated and really mad. And, and I was like, God, how could you do this to me? How could you do this to my family? Uh, look at where I'm at. Look at what's going on. Why, God? And I remember I started crying. And I, I, was, I was getting real emotional and I was getting really mad. And uh, I walked into my living room, and I'll never forget it. And, and I, started, I started weeping. And, and I just, I remember, I remember the feeling of, of I was so far gone. I had aspirations to be a man of God. I had aspirations to give myself to my wife in purity one day. I had aspirations to be alcohol drug free so that I may be the light that Jesus Christ has taught me to be, that I could help people in addiction, and I had become a victim of everything that I didn't want to become. And I found myself on my knees in my living room floor, and I said, God, I pray that you would take everything, that you would take all of me, all that I am, your will be done. And that day I went down, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's crazy, but I went down a sinner. I went down an addict. I went down uh, with a mouth of profanity. I went down in all this sin. And I stood up a righteous man, and I stood up a child of God, and I stood up free from my sin, free from my condemnation, and I was changed forever. And I knew that when I stood up, I would be different. I knew that when I stood up, <clears throat> that I would spend the rest of my life telling people the power of Jesus Christ to set us free. And, and that's where I am today. And I've, I've been traveling. I love people. I love young adults. I love college students. Um, and I hate the devil. I absolutely hate the devil, and I get really frustrated, and I get really mad, and it's righteous anger, but I, I am here today, and I was, I was praying about, Lord, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say to these young men and young women? What can I possibly do? And the fact is that I could spend hours upon hours, days, maybe weeks, months, years, and I would never be able to tell you everything that I would want to. I couldn't do it. And so in prayer and in time spent, I figured out that I would just tell you and I will leave you with something that has changed my life for forever. I will never be the same. I'm never going to go back. And, and it's, it is this, that the Word of God is living and active. The Word of God has transformed and changed my life. I can't tell you everything that you need to know, but I can leave you with the truth that when you spend time in the Word of God, you will be radically changed and transformed by the power and the love of of Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And so that's what I want to talk to you uh, tonight about. And it's, and it's the question of where do we find our value? Where do we find um, a purpose? Where do we find significance? And where do we find meaning? And I, I wrote this down. Me and my mentor, Mike Keybone, uh, loved the guy. But we went down, we, we had some calculators out, we looked at some statistics. And we came up with this, and I want to let you guys know um, what your guys' life is like. I know sometimes you guys wouldn't. I had no idea that my life was this busy. And we broke this down. The average day in the life of a teenager, it does not apply to everybody, but it's a general thing. So I want you guys to pay attention, and it's, it really does it's going to blow your mind. And so the average day in the life of a teenager, they spend seven hours on average at school, three hours watching TV, two hours playing video games, one to two hours doing homework, for me that was zero, four hours on the internet, three hours texting, if you're dating, it's gonna double. So six hours texting, five to seven hours of sleep. So really, what's happening is we're spending, we're putting 30 hours worth of stuff into the 18 hours that we're awake. It's, it's crazy. And this is a multitasking generation. We're texting, we're surfing the web, we're watching TV, and baking cookies all at the same time. It's crazy what you guys can do. It's, it's absolutely insane. Um, but that means if we're spending that much time, where, 
where's the time with God? Where does that put God? And that's, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about tonight. And so in your defense, in my defense, me and Mike went through and we broke it down. And so if you go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday for an entire year, you do not miss a weekend or a Wednesday, and you spend 20 minutes in the Word of God every single day without fail, 365 days a year, the total time that you will have spent with the Lord, 11 days. That's 11 more days than somebody who does not believe in Jesus. That's crazy. And what's crazy is that more than likely, we're not going to have perfect attendance. So we, we dumbed it down. If you spend uh, perfect attendance and you spend five days a week, that's eight days with the Lord. Okay, what about two days in perfect attendance? Six days. To be honest, a lot of us don't spend quiet time with the Lord. So if we have perfect attendance every Sunday and Wednesday, we spend a total of two days to be even more real, I don't know anybody really, even myself included, uh, who, who has perfect experience in church. And so if you go on you know, average about half the time of the year, you're going to spend 24 hours total with the Lord. 24 hours. And that's kind of what I'm here tonight to tell you is that that's pretty serious. That's pretty significant. When you look at the world and you turn on the news, and you uh, get on the internet, and you get on Facebook, and you see the junk that's going on in our world. You see the, the oppression of the enemy, and you guys have seen it in this last week or two. Where are we finding our value? Where are we spending our time? If we are God's workmanship, if we are the vessel of Jesus Christ, where are we spending our time? Where are we finding our significance? Who are we defined by? Think about it. We spend, uh, we're influenced by TV, internet, iPhones, iPads, iPods, music, movies, friends, teammates, family, all these influences, all these outside influences. But the thing is, who are we? Who are we? So where are we going to find the answers of who we are? And so I, I want to I want to talk to you. Uh, I want to read these verses to you um, about the power of the Word of God. It says in Hebrews four twelve, for the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double edged sword. It, it, it even penetrates dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. That's the Word of God. That's what I'm diving in every day, every single day of my life. I spend time with the Lord. In Galatians 5.16, it says, So I said to you, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. Okay? And in young men and young women, this was a, a verse that truly spoke to my heart. Psalms 119, and I encourage you, Psalms 119, read it. It's the largest chapter in all of the Bible, and the whole chapter is about the Word of God, and how powerful and how significant. It's an amazing chapter. And verses 9 through 12 says, How can a young man keep his way pure? Man, that was the question to me in all of high school. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to the word. I will seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands, for I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And the last verse is this in Psalm 119, 105. It says, For the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A light unto my path in this dark and corrupt world absolutely corrupt world. And I want to tell you guys, from experience, I, I was in high school, I was in college, and this has changed and transformed my life like you wouldn't believe. Absolutely wouldn't believe. I didn't, I was, I was trying to figure out who I was. I tried to place that God-shaped hole uh, with, with drugs and alcohol. It didn't work. Relationships didn't work. There is nothing that can satisfy in Jesus Christ into your heart. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. And so, the Word of God has transformed my life. And I do this really, really important illustration. It's okay to laugh. And I think it's funny, uh, but it truly is powerful. And that is this. When you spend time in the Word of God, 
it truly begins to filter how you hear, what you hear, who you define by, how you're defined, gives you meaning, purpose, significance, and this is what happens. And this is, this is seriously a, a true story in my life. Hey, Mark, you know you're an idiot, a low life loser. You graduate from college, you can amount to nothing. You're nobody. When you speak, nobody's going to listen to you. And I'm like, you suck. Man. But this is what happens. Because I know who I am in Christ, because I know what the Bible says about me, I'm able to block that stuff out with my Bible monks. Okay? So you put your dad gun Bible monks on. <laughs> And it goes like this. Hey, Mark, you're a loser, love life, nobody. Nobody's going to talk to you. Never graduated college. Well, he's going to listen to what you say. And I'm like, yo, what's up, man? Hey, yeah, did you say that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, handed it together in my mother's womb, and that before the foundations of the world, you knew me by name? You knew me by name? You've created me with significance and purpose and meaning to bring a hope and a joy to have a relationship with you? Dude, I am something. I am somebody, and it changes. It changes the way that I view the world, and it filters everything that I hear, absolutely everything that I hear. And it also, when you, when you begin to, to hear differently, you also begin to see differently, and I put on my Christ vision. <laughs> Swag. <laughs> Jesus swag. No, so check this out. It might go something like this. Hey, you see that kid over there? And he's kind of chunky and he's weird and he smells funny and he's a loser. Nobody likes him. And then you begin to see how Jesus sees. And that kid all of a sudden becomes, hey, wait a second. That kid, yeah, Jesus died for him. He loved him so much that he gave his only son so that he may live in eternity with him. He loves him. And you begin to see different. You begin to see those, those kids that maybe nobody sees. And, and it also, uh, this is the last thing, <laughs> you begin to speak differently. You hear differently, you see differently, and you begin to speak differently. The mouth of peace. <laughs> So, uh, Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only that is what is, uh, only what is encouraging and building one another up. <laughs> you guys can take your pictures. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, we begin to be transformed. I like these. We begin to be transformed by the Word of God in everything that we do. And guys, uh, you know, I know we've experienced, uh, some of you guys are dealing with it, no family members of, uh, you know, we had suicides that were committed. And, and it's crazy because, um, man, I, I absolutely hate, absolutely hate the enemy. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't want you to succeed. He wants you to amount to nothing. He wants you to not feel valued, liked, loved. He wants to bring you to the lowest of lows. But God said, I came so that you may have life and life to the full. Life to the full. You are valuable. You are beautiful. You are significant. You do matter. God has created you to do crazy things for this world, to transform and flip this world on its head. You are the light. Scripture says that we're supposed to be the light, shining like a city on a hill for all to see. You are that light. This school should be transformed by the love of Christ that you guys show on a daily basis. And I pray that as you read the Word of God, you begin to be defined, not by what the world says, but what He says is true about you. 
That's my passion. That's my passion is that you guys would know who you are and that everything that you have with inside of you, you would act upon that and that you would move in that. I want you guys to bow your heads and, and I want to read this over you. This is a poem that I wrote. I do like poetry. What's up? Come on. Um, and I just want you guys to uh, bow your heads and after I'm done reading, I'm going to pray over you. Um, the title of the poem is Hate Evil and Love Jesus. And it goes like this. What if we talk a minute about the corrupt world that we live in? Not like the one in the beginning, but this one where people keep sinning. See, since the beginning of our existence, the enemy twisted all that was good. He took the things that we shouldn't, and he convinced us we should. See, when sin entered the world, it created war against our spirit and flesh. But the thing is, is our spirit and sin were never meant to mesh. So when the apple was bitten, it was more than just a fruit. It changed our human nature. Now evil had taken root. It's so easy to get mad at whoever ate from the tree. But we have a choice to stop sin, believe in Christ, and be free. It's sad that people think they're disposable, forgotten, and even worthless. But in fact, you're the most valuable thing that he has ever had to purchase. But our world is so damaged, people can't grasp that thought. We can reject it or not, but the fact is, our room has already been bought. So with the way I see it, religion was never the matter. And Paul actually writes to us to avoid godless chatter. So with that being said, let's take a look at the story sent from heaven above. No story on earth demonstrates more true, powerful, and selfless love. There's nothing more humble in this world to be found for than a king to have laid his crown on the ground. He stepped out of heaven and into the earth. He was placed inside Mary and given through virgin birth. For God so loved us all that he sent his only son to die for our sins and our lives to be one. He desires a relationship and he longs to know you more. And he made this all possible through the cross that he bore. Now nothing can separate us no matter the mistake. And it's an open invite. He longs for you to partake. Something so easy, yet we make it so hard. So then in humility, let us let down our guard and confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord. If you don't believe me, I dare you to pick up your sword. Dive deep into the word and read each and every letter. Then you realize a life with Jesus is a life all the better. To find happiness elsewhere, your chances are slim. And in fact, none can have eternal life except for Day by day, he shows his teachings to be true. Christ came, Christ died, just to know and love you. Father, I thank you so much. Thank you so much for the ability to stand before these young men and young women. God, you have used a sinful man. You have used a person full of mistakes. You chose to use me. I am weak, but in my weakness you are strong. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak life and truth into the hearts of everyone here tonight. But God, I, I know I, I can't leave this place without giving somebody an opportunity. I don't know what your circumstances are. I don't know what you're going, what's going on in your homes. I don't know what's going on in your heart, in your life, in your schools, in your work, in sports. I don't know that. But what I do know is that Jesus loves you. That Jesus wants you. He wants you in all of your filth. Because he does this. He forgives you. He cleanses you. And he, and he takes your sin and he casts it into the sea of forgetfulness. You are called to more than this. You are called. Absolutely called to be more than we are right now. So maybe you're in here, maybe a friend brought you, maybe you've never heard the name of Jesus. Maybe you have, and maybe you've uh, kind of faked it for a while. But tonight is the night that you surrender everything that you are and all that you have. And you get a chance and an opportunity to say, Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I want you. So if that's you tonight, with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around, I want you to raise your hand and meet me eye to eye if you're in here and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. On the count of three. One, two, three.
else. This is your time. This is your time. It's not by my, my, it's not by my words. It's not by my power. But it's the power of the Holy Spirit working in this room right now. Is there anybody? I don't want you to leave here with a regret. Take advantage of the opportunity. Is there anybody else that wants to accept Jesus as their Savior? because we love one another. We do this because we're a team. And, and, and I want us to pray out loud together with these people that have made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. And so, loudly, it's not the words that we speak, it's the condition of our heart. And so I want to, uh, I want everybody to repeat after me in this prayer. And then after we're done, and I'm not kidding, I want you to cheer like you just scored the winning touchdown or scored the, the goal winning point and whatever it may be, I want us to get to our feet and get excited for the people that have stepped into an eternity with Jesus Christ. So repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I am a sinful man. God, I pray that you would forgive me. I believe that you sent your son to die on the cross for my sin. Change me, Lord. Make me new. I will serve you and I will serve others for the rest of my days. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.